I came across this reverb listing and I was like, why was this guitar photographed at this specific angle? Flipping through the photos, I found out why. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Our first feature tonight is a 1977 Gibson Les Paul. And if it wasn't for the fact that this was a refinish, that would be insanely cool. Because the first official year of the Silver Burst color is 1978, but it was prototyped in 1977, and that's why I had to click on the listing. Just to make sure that it wasn't one of those. But that finish was primarily used on Les Paul Customs to start, and then throughout the later 70s and the 80s they tried on a few other things, but this is a Les Paul standard. That looks to me like they left the headstocks lacquer alone because it's still nice and ambered over. But here you go, um, read it and weep. That's why it was taken at this particular photo angle. Not exactly the most traditional silver burst, but you know what's cool is they actually got the burst shape really good. They just artistically decided not to teardrop it here and made it like a half black, half white moon burst type thing. Maybe it would grow on you the more and more you see it, but as a silver burst enthusiast, I'm not a big fan at first glance. But it looks like our knobs have been replaced, pickups don't look stock, we've got a new Les Paul custom style pick guard mysteriously signed by a JB. But then we also have an ABR1 styled bridge even though a 77 would have a Nashville style. So we had to have had some sort of a conversion. From what we can see in this photo, it's definitely been refretted with some nice jumbo frets. And you've got some insane finish checking along our binding. But here's a slightly closer photo of the headstock. Again, this doesn't look half bad. And then our next photo set actually shows you that you've got the silver on the edge as well as the black. A nice bursted pattern, very similar to how Gibson does theirs. So I know what you're thinking. With the guitar looking like this, you probably don't even want to see the back or it's just going to be black. No, I was actually pleasantly surprised they did a pretty decent job on the back. Like is the bursted pattern 100% correct on the neck? No, but it looks believable enough. The headstock, these guys were smart, they masked off the original serial number, because the thing about this style is that's a decal. If you remove the finish and remove that, you're gonna have zero serial number. And who's gonna believe that this is a real Gibson Les Paul after all those changes? That was a very, very smart move on their behalf. And yeah, our burst shape is a little bit janky here. But to be honest, some of the original era silver bursts are, so it's authentic. Although the white backplate's a bit strange. But what does the seller ask for a refinished, highly modified 1977 Gibson Les Paul? $3,639. But oh my goodness, it makes sense. I thought someone was just being crazy. <laughs> okay, it had a third humbucker installed on it. So when it was refinished, it likely had a teardrop shape, but then they filled in the route and probably decided it's never going to match perfectly, so let's go with black. If that's not quite your style, I do have this 1980 Les Paul Standard on my website for 2800, which I think is a pretty fair deal for that. But our next guitar is a modification I have not seen before. We've got an Alnico 5 staple pickup in the neck, a humbucker in the bridge, it's been converted to an ABR1, and then we've got a Bigsby thrown all the way down at the bottom. This is just such an elegantly classy looking guitar. Because normally you only find that staple pickup in the 1954 reissue Les Paul Customs, or the originals, and in a few select arch tops. But since this SG is ebony, that matches perfectly, and something about that humbucker is a great combination. It makes me think of like a hot rotted original, because some guys will route out that bridge pickup. But before we talk about the bridge, let's talk about the Bigsby. Did you notice it's a left-handed version? They just took the bar off? I'm curious if they did that as like a tribute to Stevie Ray Vaughan of how he liked to have the left-handed trims on his Stratocasters. Or if that's just what they happened to have in their parts drawer and they wanted to slap that on there to give you some jazz master plinky plinky ringy ringy strings. Or perhaps it's just drilled to the top to look cool and act as a weight to prevent some neck dive. But our bridge actually holds a secret. You can see right here, there's like capped off studs. Because believe it or not, I would have never guessed this was a 2022 <laughs> created SG special. You can buy these brand new online for 1600 bucks and it would look something like this straight from the factory. So they took the wrap tail, capped it off and installed the ABR one into that. Okay, <laughs> that's fun. Then it looks like we put their own custom truss rod cover on there. And then for the most part left the back alone. Yeah, sure enough, if you wanted more proof, there's the baby photo. That unfortunately they don't do anymore. But you can actually find a YouTube video on this listing with his band Solar Drip playing the Logger House. 
It does look pretty cool over there on stage. He's wearing an outfit to match the guitar. And this one's on his reverb page for 1800 plus shipping. But now in the spirit of Halloween, we've got a little bit of a Dr. Frankenstein monster here. 1978 Gibson Les Paul Melody Maker. This caught my attention because A, $13.88, that doesn't seem like a bad price. Melody Makers did exist in the 70s. However, they were based on that like 62 to 64-ish body style double cut. And you don't see these things pop up too often, but I've had them in the past. They are surprisingly higher quality than the 60s versions. Like, in terms of feel, it has more of a professional elegance to it because the neck is a little bit wider, the body is a little bit heavier. Now, there's nothing wrong against the 60s ones, but they, they have their own thing going on. I just want you to know the feel is vastly different between the 70s and 60s. So naturally, this one catches my attention because it's that 1959-1960 style, but yet you can clearly see it's got the Norlin era headstock on it. So I was kind of hoping... Ooh, is it a prototype? And I think this photo tells you everything you need to know. No, it's definitely been at the very least refinished. There is a chance that this is a legit serial number. It's just been like scraped out because somebody put the new finish over top of it. The headstock's open book shape doesn't look quite right. And when somebody refinishes something, they have to sand it down. So that could explain our headstock. Or maybe there was a repair and they had to put like new wings on it. Or this was an originally a Melody Maker headstock shape. Because you gotta remember, Melody Makers have a smaller headstock. So sometimes people graft the wings on to make it look good. The Pearl Gibson logo actually looks surprisingly convincing. I would love to see what kind of truss rod is in there. But unfortunately, we do not readily have the photo. But as far as the layout, I mean, it's got the obnoxiously long placed stop bar tailpiece that looks like that is nickel whereas the bridge is chrome you've got some sort of a melody maker look and pick up to it gibson didn't bring this style back until the mid 80s i think that's a model people sleep on because they get specked out with the abr1 bridge a legit one and a humbucker those were a lot of fun when you could pick them up for a thousand bucks but when we look on the edge yeah you can see there's definitely been some sort of a repair there the back of the body is a matching black it's been used it's got some scratches so clearly it's some sort of a, a project type thing but the price isn't obnoxious but now brace yourselves for this one a 2003 gibson custom shop 54 reissue les paul surf I'm a guitar collector, and even I'm like, I don't know about this one. It would not surprise me if this one was part of the whole Art of Guitar series, because unfortunately, they're not 100% documented. For example, there was a Les Paul with some bugs on it, as well as an ES5. And then don't forget about the SG Custom, which was on Reverb about a year ago. That one, it's crazy enough, I, I can border like it if it was the right price. But they basically had a bunch of different artists do things, including Matt from The Simpsons. With this Les Paul and Les Paul on that Les Paul, this one would have been a gold top 54 rap tail, so that's pretty cool, but they swapped out the plastics for the black ones. And then we've got this skull dude with some waves that are like turning into horse or dragon heads, and it just says Gibson Surf on it. Maybe this was a promotional thing for a different reason, but it was signed by the artist Shaw. Maybe I was wrong about this. Now that I've cleansed my palate, so to speak, and looked at some of the other Art of Guitar guitars, I, I mean, this one might be a little bit more accepting, but they basically just don't finish the top and use it as a blank canvas, kind of like those canvas Telecasters that we've talked about from Fender Japan recently. But then the back is completely black. Headstock left alone. Serial number does indeed date it to 2003. You've got your Gibson Custom Shop logo and all your other good matching stuff including your COA, branding it as Gibson Surf. Unfortunately, I can't find anything more about it. But he's asking $5,000 for it if you're interested in it. For sale by The Guitar Buyer in Dayton, Ohio. But to finish out tonight's episode, I've got two more for ya. Look what the music zoo cooked up here. A Les Paul Custom with double cream pickups, presumably the 57 Classics. No pick guard gold hardware, golden knob. And then they just throw the maple fretboard on there just in case what they've already done isn't controversial enough. <laughs> I love the music zoo. They do some weird stuff and they've got the clientele to sell it to. I feel they should have threw a natural maple neck on this just for fun. But I can definitely say I've never seen a brand new Gibson look exactly like this one. And cool to see maple fretboards being used in 2024. It's not just a 70s thing. 
But lastly, we need to take a quick trip over to the House of Guitars. Look what they listed. A Burl Top Les Paul Custom again. Burl Tops certainly are not traditional. It's got the interesting wood grain that kind of goes in a circular pattern and is omnidirectional. These tend to look really good with kind of like a rainbow staining effect because you can play off of that. But Gibson has been producing these occasionally upon dealer requests and other various custom orders. In fact, we've recently documented this one on the show. It's serialized as a 2022, but I would argue my top is a little crazier. I'm curious which one you guys prefer. Because at first I was kind of scared when I saw another one. But for me, I'm definitely glad I reviewed this one. And it's technically part of the Crimson Division. However, it's all mahogany on the back, including our neck. Whereas this one, they changed it up with a five-piece maple neck. So yeah, that's kind of cool there. But being a House of Guitars exclusive, they get a cool little medallion booklet. But you do get their own special COA for House of Guitar. And theirs is much cheaper than mine, 8299 but that's the Crimson tax for ya. And something else to consider is this is a regular Les Paul Custom. It's got the Nashville style bridge. Whereas technically, this one is a 68 reissue, giving you the ABR1 bridge. And some of those other finer detailed reissue specs. Alright troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.